Welcome to the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. My name is George Ortega, and this is episode number 16, Means to Enlightenment Smiling. Uh, we're recording this on August 15th, 2017, and this series, as you know, is about exploring the concept of enlightenment that's been around for two to three millennia, and uh, we, we're exploring it, and also trying to kind of like figure out how to, how to become enlightened, how to become more enlightened. So last week we did a review of the elements of enlightenment. There were, I think, about 14 different elements, and happiness was one of them. And today, like, um, since we've already gone through all the elements, now for the, for the future shows, we're going to be exploring components or aspects of each element. So like within the... the um, the element of happiness, there is this, this idea of smiling. And so that's what this episode is going to be about. So it just basically means to the elements of enlightenment. And so, all right, so let's, let's begin. Um, so smiling is, I mean, if, if there's one thing that's probably more important to enlightenment, I mean, I think morality is extremely important, but, but in general, I mean, because happiness is such a moral thing. Happiness is such a good thing. Like, the smile is the, the foundation to all of this. I mean, just like, imagine, imagine a world where, like, <laughs> you see, everywhere you see, people are smiling. That would be a very happy, very enlightened world. Um, so that's, you know, we're going to talk about the, you know, various aspects of this, you know, smiling phenomenon. Okay, so like, you know, basically smiling is really the, the, the fundamental behavior of happiness. You know, it's, it's like, it's, if, there's, if there's anything that's physiological, that, that's, that's, you know, that, that you know, serves as the, the essence of, of happiness, at least that we can see, it, it, it definitely is smiling. All right, they've done a lot of research on smiling. They have discovered, for example, that that, um, what do you call them, uh, fetuses, <laughs> fetuses before they're born and become infants, you know, in utero, they smile, you know, and they, they determine that, that basically these smiles happen when the, the fetuses are in REM sleep. And, or I, they probably figured that out once the, <laughs> the fetuses became um, infants, whatever, once they were born and all. But I, they could have found, I don't know. But anyway, so like, and then you got to wonder, you got to wonder what a fetus is going to be smiling about, you know, before it's born. Uh, but it, it's like an inherent, very natural behavior, you know. Um, I'm not sure anybody, you know, is, is born without the ability to smile. Okay, so like, so babies smile in utero, and then like, you know, what happens is, then within, I think, a few days, um, perhaps a week or two or three after birth, um, infants show their first social smile. And that's got to be like, that's got to be, you know, truly blissful to the parents because like, you know, and that, that leads you to kind of like wonder what that's about. You know, like you have the, I guess the, um, the parent, the mother or the father smile at the child, um, perhaps... And, you know, we human beings have this way of, of mimicking, of imitating behavior. You know, it's like that's an instinct that we have. A lot of other animals have it also. But, but it's, it's beyond that. It's like, you know, it's like this, this feeling that, that goes with an infant's, you know, like social recognition smile. And that, you know, again, it's like it's about recognizing something in the parents. And, you know, perhaps I imagine they, they experience this with other caregivers also, but, but, you know, it's like, it's, it, it shows the, the social dimension of, of smiling, that, that smiling actually, um, it's thought to have developed to a certain extent as a, a social means of uh, communication. So let's, let's explore this, um, you know, the, the history of the research on smiling. Um, this guy before Darwin, and then Darwin in, in the 1850s or so, he Basically, he, he made the discovery. And again, this other guy before him, I, I don't remember his name, but basically what they discovered is that generally we believe that um, something happens to cause us to feel happy and then we start smiling 
you know, as a result of this feeling of happiness, okay? You know, and that happens. That happens a lot, right? But what Darwin and this other guy discovered is that the inverse can also be true. That, like, one can actually smile, you know, and then the feeling follows the smiling. It's called the facial feedback hypothesis. Um, and the idea behind that is just the act of smiling itself evokes the feeling of happiness without something having to evoke the smile first. So they did, they actually did some experiments on this. Um, well, no, I'm going to get to that later, am I? Yeah, let me get to that later. Um, all right, so basically, like, there, there's an article on, on the internet um, where um, it describes this research. And basically, they had subjects, they were, subjects were given a map of the human body, you know, head to toe, and they were asked to then like draw or highlight on the map of this human body where in their body they felt different emotions like happiness, sadness, anger, fear, love, surprise, etc. And what was very interesting about this, um, this experiment is that it showed two things. It showed that happiness was among all the different emotions that they um, tested Happiness was the one that the subjects felt throughout their entire body, but the key for this show, since we're focused on the smiling, is that mainly the, the main area where people feel happiness is their face, their head, and, and then the, the second area is their, their chest, you know, I guess by the heart area or whatever. So, so then you have to think that, like, you know, basically when people are smiling, or when people are happy, they are keyed into this smile. It, again, it's this facial feedback. They, the idea is like, oh, I'm smiling, I must be happy. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not, it's not that simple. I mean, certain, certainly the smile will follow genuine happy feelings that come uh, as a result of various other things, but, but there is a very strong connection. Okay, so like what this show is about is to advocate that we should all as much as possible <laughs> from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to sleep. And ideally, I haven't figured this out <laughs> how this might be done, but ideally we should be smiling through our, our sleep. You know, the idea, all right, it's so like, now here's the thing. Um, what I'm not advocating kind of like the, the, the bearing one's teeth, you know, very wide, big smile that sometimes waitress or stewardesses have and stuff. You know, that's, the, you know, that, you know, that would, you know, imagine everybody walking around the street like that. I'm not sure. But, but what, I'm, what I'm advocating, what this show is about, you know, to a great extent, is to advocate for that we should all, you know, basically be having this, this kind of like a, a closed mouth, kind of like a, a bit stronger than a Mona Lisa smile. It should be, it should be like, you know, that, that should be you know, what our facial expression should be habitually, routinely, that, you know, we should strive to do this moment to moment, you know, hour after hour, um, because it feels good, because it, you know, it, it feels good and helps other fe people feel good and all, and <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so anyway, so now, all right, here's the thing. Um, again, enlightenment isn't just about happiness. In other words, like enlightenment is also about morality, goodness. So it's not just about your happiness. So like when, when you cultivate, and I want you to start doing this right now, if you're watching this, I want you to start like, you know, just a closed mouth, pleasant facial expression. You know, like if somebody was like watching you and somebody, and you needed to demonstrate to this person that you were enjoying whatever you were doing, you know, you would smile. So again, you know, just have this pleasant facial expression. But, all right, the thing is, there are different ways to be happy. Like, for example, there, there are sardonic smiles. Or, you know, in other words, like something, something happens. You, you ever see those movies where, the, where the, the villain, you know, has this dastardly smile and all? So, like, we, we, can, have, we can be happy at other people's misfortune. We could be happy at our doing something we know is wrong. So this is not good. This is not good. And naturally, if you've seen movies, you understand that we express this immoral behavior through our smiles. So, so obviously, the, the kind of smile that I'm advocating for, for greater enlightenment, you know, it's the posture of enlightenment, is, is a very ethical smile, a smile 
that that is not, for example, prideful, that, that doesn't say to another person, I have something you don't have, or, or you know, I'm suffering less than you are. Some, you know, you've got to ha have a smile that's genuine, that's kind of like a gift to other people, um, that invites actually, you know, the, the happiness of others. All right. Um, now, I want to get back to this, this experiment, these experiments they conducted, you know, in the lab to demonstrate that, I mean, the amazing thing about a smile is you don't even have to, you don't have to intend to smile for, for the smile to evoke pleasant, positive, happy feelings. And one way they, they determine this, they, this, they've done like dozens and dozens of experiments, you know, in, in various ways to, to demonstrate this. But one way they did it is they had subjects put a pencil between their teeth and hold it between their teeth. And what that does is it activates the zygomatic muscles, the smile muscles, right? And so these people weren't intending to smile. And then they basically measured their happiness in, in certain ways. Like in, in one experiment, they had them rate how funny uh, a comic strip was, okay? And, you know, it's, interestingly, the people who had the pencils stuck between their teeth rated this comic strip as funnier as the people who didn't. And that's just one way. So, so basically, the idea behind this smile is it's automatic. It, you know, ordinarily we think that, um, that if a smile isn't quote unquote genuine, it's not going to um, evoke happiness. No, <laughs> no, you can fake, you can fake a smile. You know, and actors do this all the time. I mean, like, you know, actors, like, you know, they're, they're like ecstatic in a scene in a movie or something. And we believe them. And I'm sure that these actors, while they're acting ecstatic, you know, smiling, beaming, whatever, they're feeling that too. And that's, that's the power of this smile. Now, of course, you know, like, you know, imagine just conversely, imagine if you were um, frowning. Imagine how difficult, you know, let's say you went your, through your day just like not allowing yourself to smile, just frowning throughout your entire day. I'm, imagine how difficult it would be to, to feel happy during those days. And incidentally, they have done experiments on that. They've, they've, um, I forget the mechanism they used. I think may, they maybe just asked people to, to, to frown, you know. I'm not sure they, they somehow like, you know, made their, their mouths go down, whatever. But, but, you know, again, like this is physiological. It's so much easier to feel happier when you smile. Okay. Um, so, all right. So like the smiling is automatic. And um, now the key to this, so like we should ideally be smiling all the time. Like we are, we're taught to have good posture, to sit up straight, to walk straight, you know, like uh, to med when you meditate, you want to have an erect back, you know, a line between up, up the spine, up through the neck and all. And this is good. And in incidentally, they've done experiments on this. When, when people slouch, when people have bad pos posture, they don't feel as good as when people sit and stand up straight. I mean, phys you know, emotionally, people are happier, feel more pleasant when they're sitting up and walking straight. All right, so now what this is about is this is about extending this very wise advice about good posture to include a smile, okay? And actually, this is not something that, that scientists, you know, came up with back like, Two, three hundred years ago, you know, when, when a person became rich, unlike today, when like when people become rich, they're like it's insatiable. They want more and more and more money, whatever. But back two, three hundred years ago, when a person became rich, ordinarily they stopped working. <laughs> they stopped working and they started cultivating the art of life. So I remember um, some some years ago, twenty years ago or so, I was like curious about like what they came up with. So I would, I would read these etiquette books, not, not to learn how to like set a table, whatever, but like they had information in these books on how like a person should comport themselves, how they should, you know, like how one should greet another person and, you know, just it was very fascinating details. But, but one of the, I remember in one book, you know, it just advocated that a person should have a pleasant facial expression, you know? And, and I mean, this makes so much sense. And, and that's, what is a pleasant facial expression? It's a smile, you know? Um, okay, um, 
so let me think. I, I just wanted to go back to like this this idea of, about the smile, you know, in an experimentation. Basically, what happens is like there's there's two kinds of smiles. One is is kind of like you're smiling, but your your eyes kind of like aren't expressing that smile. Also, you know, that's like you know that's kind of like a half a smile. It's good. It still works. But then there is something that's known as the Duchamp smile. Okay, and the Duchamp smile is much much harder to fake because it includes kind of like crinkling up your eyes so your eyes are smiling too and that i think you know you can learn to do that it's much harder but that you know i'm not sure that should really be a part of of posture you know <laughs> that might be a little, look a little funny whatever but all right but getting back to this so so the idea is like the smiling should be a part of your posture and so like what happens is like you know if if you were trained and taught right you know as a kid you know, good posture should come natural to you. You know, you shouldn't have to think about it. It should be automatic. You know, you're sitting and, and standing and, and, and walking upright, straight, and with your back straight, not slouching and all. And again, you don't have to think about it. It's habitual. So this is what you want to cultivate for your smile, okay? You, you want it to be habitual. So like, again, it's a pleasant facial expression, okay? Just like a bit, you know, stronger than a Mona Lisa smile. And, and, and so what is this going to do? All right, this is at, as you cultivate this habit, this, this wonderful habit, it's going to remind you to, to be in touch with the, your happiness. Okay, we go throughout our days and we get involved in a lot of, a lot of activities. You know, right now I'm working on a paper and so like I may be typing away at, at the, uh, the keyboard and monitor and, you know, focused on what I'm doing. But, you know, sometimes we get so wrapped up in what we're doing, we forget to enjoy it. All right, so this like, so like to the extent that we develop, cultivate this, this habit of smiling, it serves as a, re, re, a, a perpetual reminder that we can be doing whatever we're doing while smiling. And again, this is, this is so much about enlightenment. It, it may not seem like it's about enlightenment because usually enlightenment topics are about like, you know, seeing everything as one and, and then non-attachment and stuff. But this, this is like so simple, so basic, so, so physiological, but it's so, so powerful, so important. All right, so, so basically as you smile, you, uh, you remind yourself to be happy you know, while you're doing whatever you're doing, because you're doing so many things throughout the day. Okay. Now, all right, so like a lot of times the most important time to do this smiling is like there's, there's, a, there's a, um, a saying in meditation. Um, you know, when you've got the time, you know, you should meditate like 20 minutes twice a day, all right? When you have time to do that, you should meditate twice a day. Then the other part of this is when you don't have the time, well, then you should meditate twice a day for an hour each time. <laughs> because, like, but the idea is, like, if you don't have the time to meditate, you're too busy. So, like, so basically with this happiness, uh, with this smiling thing, you know, it's these times where, where we're worried about something, where we're upset, something happened that, that we didn't want to happen or something didn't happen that we wanted to happen, whatever. You know, it's during these times that this practice of smiling is the most powerful because it can just turn us around. And we're, you know, I think we know this. For example, like, I think we've all experienced kind of like being in a, in, a, in a sour, grumpy mood or something or being upset. And then a friend, you know, somebody close to us, you know, you know intentionally trying to make us feel better will we'll, we'll crack a joke or do something to get us smiling, get us laughing. And all of a sudden, you know, that, that mood is broken. All right, so like, so basically like this technique of smiling to feel better, you know, the posture, whatever, you want to do this ideally the most when you don't feel like doing it, okay? Um, okay, so like back to the smile um, in terms of other people, you know, naturally it's how we know that other people are happy, it's how people know that we're happy. Now this, you know, we, we started out with some social interactive elements of the smile you know it's a social kind of thing and basically they've done research for example when you smile when you have a pleasant facial expression you know other people are going to judge you they're going to see you as more intelligent 
They're going to see you as more attractive and they're going to see you as a better person, a more moral person. You know, so, so people who are smiling, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an advantage if you want to like, and they actually, they, they, um, they train salespeople like this. Even like sometimes salespeople are, are on, on the phone and, um, and they train these salespeople that even though they're on the phone, the other person in, in Idaho or wherever can't see them. These salespeople are trained to smile because they have, you know, they've, they've, <laughs> they've pretty much studied everything by now. So they've studied that um, basically when a person is smiling on one end of the line, the other person on the other end of the line can generally tell you know, that person is smiling, okay? So, um, so, so basically, you know, it's, 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 it's what, you know, people can sense this and it's positive, you know. And it also, like, you know, when you're smiling, you're going to make, make um, it, it makes other people happier, you know. And again, this, this has to do with this, um, and you could try this sometimes, you know. Um, you're talking with someone, right? And I've done this and it works. You know, you, you, you're talking with someone and they're talking about something, like they're worried about something, something, something negative. They're complaining, right? And, and very subtly, you start, you know, smile, a very gentle, you know, subtle smile. And, you know, what I've noticed when I've done this a few times is the other person, all, you know, all of a sudden starts feeling a bit better. They start smiling. We, again, we have this tendency to, to mimic each other. So when we walk around smiling, feeling good because we're smiling, Emotions are contag contagious, you know, and again, we, we mimic each other, so that's going to help other people to, um, to feel happier. All right, just briefly, I remember, you know, this was 10 years ago or so, I was reading Psychology Today, and there was a short blurb, I, I never followed up on the, um, the article that it was based on, but basically, they, um, it was about, like, if, if one is a therapist or a counselor, and one is kind of like, you know, or even if one is like, just like, you know, consoling a friend who's, who's upset, whatever, you know, just complaining about something. This article just ab actually advocated that, that the person who's helping should have a pleasant smile, you know, because again, that does two things. One, as, as I just, you know, was, was saying, it helps the other person kind of like say, oh, what, what I'm feeling, you know, is not so bad. What I'm experiencing actually really isn't all so, all so bad. And the other thing is like, if, if, for example, let's say if somebody's a therapist or some psychiatrist or whatever, you know, or somebody's listening to people's problems a lot, maybe like somebody's working customer service or something. Um, so like, if one is smiling, that's going to protect that person from the negative emotions of others. Because even though like, what, what's interesting, even though like emotions are contagious, you know, you know, happiness and contagious. Well, actually, they're more contagious downward. A person is more likely to bring you down than you are to bring the person up. So, so it's important to, to, um, to protect your happiness. You know, and again, a great way to do this is with a smile. Okay, so like as you're doing this, we've only got about four minutes, so like um, we'll probably get through most of this. Um, the way to do this, like Generally, people meditate, and I, I think I'm going to do another show on meditation where I'll get into this in, in a lot more detail. But, you know, when you're taught to meditate, you are generally taught to meditate on your breath, on a mantra. And this stuff is just not all that interesting, which probably explains why a lot of people don't meditate. I, I've meditated for about 43 years, and, and I started out, like, meditating on a mantra. Then I started was meditating on a breath, then, like, body scan. But, like, a couple of years ago it dawned on me that, that I could just actually be meditating on the feeling of happiness. So, so to do this, there's, there's a couple of ways to do this. One, you could like meditate on the feeling of happiness, first evoking it by some memory in the past or you're imagining something in the future that you, you know, see as happiness, you know, evoking. But an another way is like if you in meditation, focus on your smile. Have your smile be the object of your meditation. That again, remember that map, that map of the bodies, the areas of the body that, that um, are most associated with the feeling of happiness. When you're focused on the smile, it's going to be kind of like a message to you that, oh yes, I am happy. Your, your brain will say, oh, I'm smiling, I must be happy. I'm focused on the smiling. So, that's, so basically what you want to do with this is 
one, you know, as you meditate on this smile, that's going to help you cultivate smiling as, as you know, habitual behavior, you know. And two, it's, it's going to help you to evoke, to, to get better at tapping into this feeling of happiness. Again, like the smile is useful because primarily it helps you to get in touch with this feeling of happiness. So you, you definitely want to um, try that. All right, now, you know, there's like, there are different, you know, you want to try to smile as, as, as often as possible. It's not all that easy sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes I think because I'm doing a a show on smiling today. I, I may be smiling a bit more than, than I do ordinarily, but I know a lot of times I'm trying to smile while I talk, and especially if I'm talking directly to a person instead of a camera. Sometimes it's difficult, but you want to try to smile while, while talking. And another thing that I've personally found difficult, but I, you know, if you watch movies and stuff, if you watch people, it is totally possible, you know, to smile while eating also, you know, and so like, you know, you, you just want to have this smile not leave you, and again, it, it, it's, it's a, a subtle, appropriate, it's not of a kind of a smile that people are going to like, you know, you know, wonder about whatever, it's not going to like, you know, it's just going to be a pleasant facial expression that that shows other people and shows you, oh yeah, I'm feeling great. All right, we've got like less than a minute. So um, basically, they should be teaching this in schools. They should be teaching our kids like as they learn to, um, to do math or read or write. They should, <laughs> the teachers say, all right, I want you to be smiling while you're doing this, while you're, while you're doing this, this, um, this division. I want, you know, I mean, I'm serious. This should be because like our kids are taught to like, do work, they're not taught to, to enjoy it, and that creates problems as a result. Um, imagine a world where, like, you walked around everywhere and people were smiling. And I don't know how this would be done, but, but if, like, somebody, you know, maybe <laughs> some government official, the Smile Project, all right, I want everybody to just be smiling. That would be just such a simple, powerful way to, to bring happiness into the streets. All right, um, we've got like four seconds, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Ortega Path to Happiness or <laughs> Enlightenment. <laughs>